Today we're going to practice dividing fractions with models. Our goal is to use models to find quotients of expressions involving two fractions. We're going to do that by building models using what's called measurement models today. Next time we're going to look at building models that are called partitive models. So just to review, we're going to use models to find quotients, and I want you to take a look at your Common Core standard as well as the objective that we'll be working on today. You don't need to write these down in your notes, but just make sure you're reviewing them so you understand that we are using Common Core standards. Now let's look at our vocabulary. A fraction is written in A over B form, and it is part of a whole. Quotient is the result obtained by dividing one quantity by another, so it's your answer to a division problem, in other words. Reciprocal, now this vocabulary word is not review, it is new, so make sure you have this one written, written down in your notes. If you already have the previous two written down in your notes, just refer back to them. Reciprocal are two non-zero numbers whose product is one. And I'll give you some examples of reciprocals in just a minute. Go ahead and take a minute to pause and write down your vocabulary. Let's look at two examples of reciprocals. Reciprocals are used to divide fractions without models. Today we're going to use models, but just to introduce you to what a reciprocal is, the reciprocal of 3 fifths is 5 thirds. So it's basically its opposite. And just to show you, its result when multiplied is always 1. So 3 times 5 is 15, and 5 times 3 is 15. 15 over 15 is 15 out of 15, which is 1 whole. 1 fourth, the reciprocal of 1 fourth would be 4 over 1. And again, 1 fourth times 4 over 1 is the same as 4 fourths, which equals 1. And yes, if you wanted to, you can cross cancel in any of these. But I just wanted to show you in the simplest way possible. So these are the reciprocals. In more lessons coming up, we're going to use these a lot more. Let's look at our first example using a measurement model. So we have 1 and 3 fourths divided by 1 fourths. Now in a measurement model, what you're asking yourself is how many 1 fourths are in 1 and 3 fourths? So we're going to divide this into quarters. Well first, let's start with our whole. So we have 1 and 3 fourths. So we'll divide this into fourths, and we need one whole and three quarters. So we have one whole and three quarters. And like I said, there's another way of looking at these division problems, and you really have to apply them to content, to context. Today we're just focusing on measurement. So now we need to say, well, how many quarters are there? Well, we can first divide this into quarters, and this second uh, one is already divided into quarters, and then I just need to say, okay, how many fourths? Well, I have one fourth here, two fourths, three, four, five fourths, six, and seven. So there are seven total. So the answer to one and three quarters divided by one quarter or one fourth is seven. So that is dividing fractions with a measurement model. Let's look at another example. So again, we're just looking at a measurement model. Our next problem, actually I think I'm going to change this problem real quick. I didn't want to do another problem with fourths. So let's divide one half by one fourteenth. So, we need to ask ourselves for a measurement model, how many fourteenths are in one half? Well, we will start with half and shade that in. 
then I need to ask myself, in that half, how many fourteenths are there? I can do that by dividing it into fourteenths. So we can divide this into fourteenths. And now I can say, okay, well, how many fourteenths are there in just one half? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there are seven fourteenths. So my answer to one half divided by fourteen, one fourteenth, is seven. There are seven holes. And if you've already done division problems by multiplying by the reciprocal, you can just check your work, but we're going to be doing that next time. Today we're really going to focus on using measurement models because I want you to be able to visualize it. Let's look at one final measurement model for dividing fractions. So we have one-fourth divided by one-eighth. And I can actually remove one of these models because it's only a fraction. And then I can divide it first into one-fourth. So we have fourths, and I only need one of those. So I'm shaded in one. So I have one-fourth, and I need to find out how many eighths are in one-fourth. Again, I notice that if I cut it into eighths, I now have two. So I have two. And again, the answer is not two eighths, it's there's two actual pieces. So I hope this helps you in understanding why the measurement models work. Next time we're going to look at a different kind of model because there's different ways to word uh, division problems. And you may think, well, it doesn't matter as long as you get the right answer. But it is important to understand the meaning behind it. So you're going to try out some problems on your own. First, I want you to focus on the guided practice displaying the reciprocals. So you're going to copy down each of these numbers, and you are going to write the reciprocals of each of them. Go ahead and pause the video to write down any problems and practice them on your own. So we have 2 thirds, 3 eighths, 5 sixths, and 7 ninths. After you're done writing the reciprocals, you can move on to the next problem. Now you're going to create your own measurement model. And if you want to use circles or any real shape that's easy for you to divide, that's fine. So you're going to divide 3 fourths, or 3 fourths is divided by 1 half. So you need to find out how many halves are in 3 fourths. So this problem, make sure that you're practicing carefully. This is going to give you an uncommon answer. Go ahead and copy down the problem. Take the time that you need. For this next problem, you are going to actually write down a division problem for this model. So look at the model. Look at how many pieces are shaded in. And look at how we have circled off a certain amount. And you need to know how many of these are in what was the original fraction. Go ahead and take a minute and copy down this problem and write down your own division problem for this model. You will check your work and answers on the next class. Finally, I want you to check your notes with my own. Make sure you have all the important information copied down. Notice how I've not given you the answers. You need to discover those on your own. But make sure you have all the important information copied down for your use. Go ahead and pause the video and double check your notes now. Again, another fabulous job. Today we've looked at dividing fractions using measurement models. And using measurement models is different than working with partitive models, which we're going to do next time, and you will be able to see in another tutorial. Great job today. Go out and help your parents around the house.